I'm Lady Ascal and today we want to talk about changing your idle state in VC phase. Which means instead of you standing in VC phase, maybe you could be sitting or having a pose with your arms holding something by default. This video was a request from one of our lovely community members and I'm more than happy to explain it, so let's go. We start in Unity and I will be using the version 2019.4.31 F1 here because this is so far the only version that works with the SDK plugin, which we will also use today. So if you run into problems, check first if you are using the correct Unity version. After loading Unity up, we have to install our plugins. As usual, we go to the assets, import package, custom package, and go by the following order. The UniVRM plugin, I'm using here the Boneword Transfer plugin as well because my display model has a tail and I will use this opportunity to highlight a part of my tail video again that many people seem to miss during the video and if you wanted to animate a tail this could be really useful for you as well as a reminder. And last but not least we install the SDK plugin. As usual all links are down in the description. If you just want to skip now to the idle state part of this video, you can skip to the next part using the video timestamps as I will have a little refresher here now on how to attach tails correctly. You can drag your model right into the bottom assets or create a folder for it after all plugins are installed. We then drag this avatar preview from down here into the hierarchy under the sample scene to the left. My first goal is now to attach my tail to the hip and I will try to take a bit more time to explain it this time. And the easy part is using the Boneware Transfer plugin, as all you have to do is finding your tail hair, which will highlight up when you select the right hair under the hair section. And if you have multiple tails, you will repeat the step now for them accordingly. We open the Boneware Transfer plugin and I want to highlight again that the name is slightly misleading as it will not transfer the bones to our desired location, it will only transfer the weight information of these bones. We still have to move the actual bones manually after. But first, we will move our tail here via drag and drop into the first box. Don't be afraid of the characters if you can't read them. The first box refers to the hair strand that we want to move weights for. The second box refers to the location it is currently at, which is the head. And the last box is for the location we want to move it to, in this case, the hips. Then we confirm with the button at the bottom and step one is complete. Now to the most important part, moving the actual bones of the tail. Which means your tail has to have bones for this to work as well, a lesson that I learned the hard way. So if you ever wanted to create a tail, don't forget to actually create some bones for it as well in Vroid. If you don't know how any of this works, I will link you my newest tail tutorial here above. As you can see here in the footage, you will have likely various hair groups and the hair under the group are the bones. If you click on them, you can see them live up a bit on your model, so you know it's for the tail and not for some other part of your hair. The trick is now to move the whole group with the mouse via drag and drop upwards in the hierarchy until we reach the hips. A little extra note here, don't drop it when the word hips is highlighted grey, but instead drop it under hips. You will usually see a little line pop up and that is the moment when you can release the mouse and drop the hair group there. As you see, our hair group for our tailbones is now under hips. And that was it for our little refresher, now on to the actual part of this video, how to change your idle state. First we click into the bottom assets, select create and then animator controller and name it whatever you want i chose here idle then we select our root on the left hierarchy and add the following component an animator you can just type that in the search bar if you have trouble finding it we can now put the controller in here already and then we have to check if we have the two tabs called animator at the top and animation at the bottom. If you never worked with animations before, you likely won't have these. And to add them, you can go to Window at the very top, select in the drop down menu the point Animation, and there you will have the Animation tab and the Animator tab waiting for you. 
The animator tab will likely just pop up at the top, but the animation tab could pop up basically everywhere, like right in your face, because this is one of these tabs that can be placed anywhere around here, as you can see. Mine is down here, right beside the console tab. We first check out the animator tab, which may look a bit weird at first, or maybe you are slightly familiar with programming and have seen a similar setup already. As you can see, we have here any state at the top, empty state at the bottom and exit at the far right. We can create a new state here by right clicking into the environment and choose create state. I will name that idle in the inspector and then we are set up for the more interesting part. We will first create a new clip, which will enable the animation interface in our animation tab. Now the idea of all of this will be that we will record a new idle state, which means we will move the bones of our avatar with the tools at the top, like the move and the rotate tool here. If you're never working with this, feel free to experiment a bit first. As long as we don't press the record button here, you won't record anything. I recommend to save your rotations or new positions onto a notepad. I, for example, would try a sitting position here and thus have to rotate the upper leg and will rotate the other leg into the same position so copy and paste is really your friend here. The same goes for the lower leg and we can reset these two if we type in zero into the rotation tabs in the inspector to the right. Now let's say we are ready to record, which means all we have to do now is to press the record button down here and start posing our avatar. If you saved your values, you can just copy paste them here or if this is your first time setting it up without testing first, you would just copy paste the values from one side to another or whatever is applicable in your situation. Once we are finished, you will see the recorded rotations under animations and with a press on the record button again, we stop recording. Under our animator, we can see now our new animation and it's up to you if you connect empty to this one directly or copy the animation over into our already created and connected state. Like so, which means we go under motion and select our new animation there and then we can delete the new grey box completely. Now all should be set up for us to export and so we go back to our avatar in the hierarchy and we won't export over the VRM0 menu as usual. Instead we will use the VSF SDK menu at the top. If everything loads fine into VC phase, it means you used the right Unity version and everything was pretty much a success. You can see a preview here too of our new sitting state. Because if I load the avatar now, we are in a sitting position. Or not. Very important to notice, if you see that it's looking weird like mine here, that means likely your locomotion option in VC phase is activated and this is interfering with our idle position now. We can turn that off here at the bottom in our general settings. And voila, we are now in a sitting position by default. You can of course try that with other poses like hand poses, arm poses or laying down. The only thing that won't change is your face because that will be picked by your tracker and of course if you're using hand tracking then you can't set the hands or arms into another position as these would interfere with each other the same as the locomotion option did before with my avatar and my legs. Thank you for watching, subscribe to the channel for more tutorials and see you all in the next one. I hope you have a wonderful day.